I'm Major George Gilman, officer in charge of the 22nd Bomb Wings Command Post. These men have been flying a disabled aircraft for almost 18 hours. They're exhausted, but they're about to try a maneuver which requires every ounce of their strength. A maneuver which many experts consider impossible. you are about to see, a fire truck plays a unique role. This is the story of a B-47 and its crew, three men who faced an unusual test of endurance and courage. It starts at March Air Force Base, California, a base of the Strategic Air Command. The time is 2030 Zulu, or 12.30 p.m. local time. The three men, Aircraft Commander Captain Robert Powell, First Lieutenant Charles E. Miles, the observer, and the co-pilot, First Lieutenant Hank Kitchener, take off on what should have been a routine training mission. Second command post, Major Gilman here. Yes, sir, we have one bird up. Banjo 2-3. Celestial navigation to Boise. Radar navigation lake to Sacramento. Radar navigation to Arrowhead. He should be starting his practice run on Arrowhead now. Yes, sir. <laughs> AC, change course to a heading of 210 degrees. Roger, changing course. AC to observer, on course. Roger, coming up on the bomb run. Give me second station. AC to observer, you have second station. 10 seconds, 9, 8, 7, Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero, bombs away. Woo -wee. Right on target. Now that's what I call a bomb run. The time they compute our score, they're going to make us a select crew. I told you fellas, stick with me, I'll make you famous. Let's go home. LA Control, this is Banjo 2-3. Have completed RBS work returning to Maynard. Hey, you want to run into Riverside tonight and see that uh, Bridget Bardot picture? I can't, Chuck. They'll have dinner started by now. How about you, Hank? You're just married. Wouldn't your wife like you to broaden your education? Afraid not. All right. Go on home and get fed and domesticated. You married guys let your stomachs trap you. You're just jealous of the trap. Oh. Maynard approach, Banjo 2-3 over thermal on initial at 4-6 past the hour. Uh, Roger, understand thermal on initial. Gear coming down. Starting descent. Half main and both outrigger gears down and locked. Can't get a light on the forward main.
Baynard Tower, this is Banjo 2-3. Unable lower my gear. We will hold that thermal and maintain VFR. Uh, Roger, Banjo 2-3. Cleared a hole east of thermal. Maynard Tower, I'm going to my control room frequency. Uh, Roger, you're clear. Contact us on this channel when ready for your approach. Hank, there's a lot of drag with that rear gear down. You better retract it. Chuck, try the emergency landing gear extension. I just knew you'd need a strong southern boy. Banjo 2-3. Banjo 2-3, this is Banjo Control, Major Gilman. George, our forward main gear won't extend. We've tried the Elge. No luck, it won't work. What's your fuel? 15,000 pounds. Well, first we'd better get you some juice. I'm going to try a gentle dive. If it's in the well door, that might free it. on the dive. The gear is still stuck. We have a B-47 in trouble. Will you scramble your tanker immediately? Octane, we have Banjo 2-3 over thermal with 15,000 pounds. Gear difficulty. You see our plan N Alpha. Roger. Estimate VOR 15 minutes at 8,000. Rendezvous. VOR 15 minutes at 8,000. Have you checked the red pages of your dance one? And have you recycled your gear? Affirmative on both. Colonel Ray's here. Oh, forward main gear won't extend. He's tried the L's, recycled the gear, and tried to dive it down. Are you sure your bomb spoiler doors are closed? Yes, sir. I've checked the alternate door system. Fuel? Tanker's on its way. I better get the tech rep over here. I'll try to look at Owens. The technical representative, Mr. Palmer Owens, is an engineer of the aircraft manufacturer attached to Strategic Air Command as a consultant on the B-47. At the appointed time, both Tanker and B-47 arrange their rendezvous according to CR Plan N-Alpha. The heavy tanker climbed to 8,000 feet, while the B-47 descended from 27,000 to meet it. Then, for an exhausted crew, began the ticklish job of in-flight refueling. Ahead, 20 feet, sir. Ahead, 15. All right, Octane, we've got it now. Thanks. Maynard Tower, this is Banjo 2-3. Completed refueling. Climbing back to 3-5,000 VFR on top. Request permission to remain in local area VFR until further notice. Can you hold him at his present altitude? Oh, at 8,000, he's going to burn up an awful lot of JP-4. 
going to cost me 10,000 pounds of fuel just to climb back to cruising altitude. There ought to be a visual check of that gear. It's a long shot, but there's just a possibility there could be an instrument malfunction. Banjo Control to Banjo 2-3. Banjo 2-3. Bob, Mr. Owens, the tech rep, is here. He suggests you check the gear visually through your crawlway before you get back to altitude. All right, fellas. You got yourself a volunteer again. Roger. We'll depressurize. up all right. Staring me in the face. Banjo 23, the banjo control. Here is up and in place. I'd better start my climb now. about Bob. No, he's fine, but he is having a little trouble with his landing gear, so we're holding him in the area so we can figure out a way to get him down. Now, there's nothing to worry about. He's got plenty of fuel, we've got a tanker here, and he can stay up indefinitely. It's just that there's no telling how long it's going to take to get that gear operating properly, so if you've got supper on, it may get a little cold. Thanks, George. Uh, and will you let me know if there's any news? Of course. Thanks a lot. moment I'm stuck. Let me get our chief engineer, see what ideas he's got. George Thomas? Minute switch. Give me Wichita on priority three. Mr. George Thomas at the Boeing plant. Banjo 2-3 from Banjo Control. I've alerted Faye. Thanks, George. Will you ask her to call Sally? Tell her to be gentle. Sally's a little new at this. Roger. Hello. May I speak to Mr. Thomas, please? He is? You know where? This is always at Maynard. All right, thanks. He's in Honolulu on vacation, the Royal Hawaiian. Maynard's words get me Honolulu, priority three. Try Mr. George Thomas in the Royal Hawaiian. No, no, not if he's done all that. Get Marks here at the plant. Tell him to pull the blueprints on the forward main. Set up a conference call. It's four o'clock here. Uh, that'd make it eight o'clock in Wichita. He's probably home having dinner. We'll have to get Marcher back to the plant. He'll be at dinner now. You know, if you guys don't come up with something, I've got three men that may never eat again. That should spoil us out of thing. on the stove. There's no sense letting it go to waste. I mean, you know, get cold. No, no, just some coffee, thanks. What time is it? Uh, ten minutes of nine. Well, why don't they just land them anyway, without the wheels? Hank did that once mm -hmm. in Korea. Not in a B-47. Not on his tanks and engines at 200 knots. You don't crash land these planes and walk away from them. Sorry, I guess I've got a lot to learn. What time is it? It's still ten of nine. It's a quarter after eleven. They're going to need another refueling soon. Hello? Yes, right here. Hello. Yes, George. 
Well, can you pull us out? We've checked out everything we can think of, including the power side of the circuit. The only thing we can come up with is we think it's... Marks, are you tell them. It's just possible that there's a short downstream of the relay that's holding the actuator. All right. You want to hang on while we give it a try? Banjo Control to Banjo 2-3. Banjo Control, this is Banjo 2-3. The factory's got an idea there may be a short in the actuator gear. So the power's actually pulling against the gear. Now, if it's downstream from the relays, it wouldn't have shown up when you pulled your control circuit breakers. All right. What do we do? Turn off all generators, turn off your battery switch, and try the L. Well, I get to volunteer again. We'll be off the air when we pull the battery switch. If anything goes wrong, we can't even communicate. I know. We'll be sweating you out. Well, then, here goes. All right, Chuck, start pumping. That's time now. George, Mark, are you still there? No, they're trying it now. When they turn the generators off, they could have caused a permanent failure in the... Banjo control. This is Banjo 2-3. Negative on the test. Hang on, Captain. We'll see if the factory's got any other ideas. No luck. Well, we've ruled out jamming of the ELGE mechanism and the actuator motor gearbox, so it has to be a mechanical jamming. We had a failure a couple of months ago of the flyweight on the outrigger gear. Never had one on the main gear. That's most likely what it is. And there's no way in the world of getting at it. Factory stuck. I can't see any way except to have them jump. The of the squadron commander. Banjo 2-3 from Banjo Control. Bob, this is Colonel Ray. The factory's out of ideas. I recommend you bail out. This is an awful nice piece of equipment to smash up. Yeah, I'm kind of attached to her. Also, I'm miserly. I just hate to throw away three and a half million dollars. Banjo Control, I've been doing some thinking. Can you fireproof the runway for me? I'll need about 3,000 feet of foam, 35 feet wide. Even with foam, I'm afraid of that belly tank. One spark and... Bob. I was as worried about the belly tank. No one's ever brought a B-47 in wheels up. Well, let's get ready for the first time. Give me the fire chief. We'll have to wait and bring him in at dawn. What time is dawn tomorrow? About 5.30. Hello, chief. Anything left in the thermos? Negative. Banjo 2-3 from Banjo Control. Get your runway phoned at first light. Banjo Control, Roger. All we have to do is sit it out for another six hours. Will you send up the waiter with some coffee? Wish I could. I will send you some juice. Your next tanker rendezvous will be at 130. Roger, understand. 130, tanker rendezvous. Well, Sergeant, you better get some of our photographers that over here. However this comes out, we should have a record of it. I'm going to check back with the plant about techniques for belly landings. For instance, I've got an idea that if you hit the brake chute just before a touchdown... Wait a minute. Hello, Faye. Look, we haven't been able to solve the gear problem, so we're going to wait till dawn and bring them in on the foam runway. They're coming in wheels up. Oh, no, of course he will, George. Thanks for letting me know. If you don't mind, I'd like to come out. What time do you think it'll be? As soon as possible after daylight. Thanks, George. A and if anything should change, we'll be here until a quarter of five. Does he... Does he think they'll make it all right? Oh, sure they'll make it all right. What are you talking about? At the appointed time, the rendezvous was made, and the ship refueled for the second time. hours until morning. 
At 0500, the fire truck started. Starting 2,000 feet from the end of the runway, a carpet of foam was laid 3,000 feet long and 35 feet wide. The carpet required 300 gallons of foam and 5,000 gallons of water. Finally, it was ready. Colonel Ray rebriefed the crew on ditching positions. In the event of fire on impact, split seconds spell the difference between life and death. It was decided to jettison the canopy to ensure a quicker exit. With all possible precautions taken, the landing attempt started. Maynard Tower, this is Banjo 2-3, departing 2-7,000. Tell them to put on the eggs and coffee. Uh, Banjo 2-3, they should have you in radar contact. Continue descent to 8,000. Better go out, sir. Banjo 2-3, maintain 314 heading. Runway 05. Roger. I don't see anything. You will. Maynard Tower, Banjo 2-3, 10 miles out on final. Say, I'm scared. You know something? I am too, but you get used to it. There it is. Maynard Tower, Banjo 2-3, now passing over VOR, five miles from touchdown. Get set. Here comes the canopy. Drifting off course. You must have lost contact when they blew the canopy. Hey, look, he's coming back on course. One mile from touchdown. Get a tight grip. He's over the field boundaries. Approaching end of runway. Fire! Wait, he hit just short of the point. Revealed no damage except paint scrapes and a few dents. The aircraft was back in service within a short time. Because of the ingenuity and courage of the men who saved her, she remained a useful instrument of flight. 